are you writing code to interact with Uniswap v3? In this video, I'll show you how to swap from ETH to Wrapped Ether to another token in only one transaction, which is not possible out of the box because ETH is not an ERC20 token. If you're not doing this, you're wasting gas and leaving money on the table. But if you stick around and watch this video, I'm going to make it easy as pie for you. Let's go. I have an almost empty JavaScript project here. I have npm set up, so I have a package.json file, and then I have an empty file where we'll be writing our code called swap eth for token.js. If we open up package.json for a second, I'll just show you the libraries that I have installed. We have Uniswap's v3 core, we have v3 periphery, we have the v3 SDK, and then we have ethers JS. Let's open up our swap eth for token.js file, which is currently empty, and let's get to writing some code to do this. I'm going to start by importing ethers.js. And I'm going to import the API for the Uniswap v3 swap router. Uh, I'll copy and paste this, and it's the only ABI that we're going to need. Now I'm also going to copy and paste the addresses of three contracts on Garly that we'll be interacting with. The swap router address, the wrapped ether address, and then the Uniswap token address. Then I'll create a few more constants for your wallet address, your wallet secret, and your infer URL. Normally I'd make these environment variables, but some people told me on another video that it was a little confusing, so we're going to hard code them in this file. Now I'm going to give these fake values because these should be kept secret, well at least the wallet secret and the infer URL. Now you can get your wallet address in secret from your MetaMask wallet and keep that wallet secret private. And you can create a free account on Infura to get your Infura URL key. Now if I run our code with these values after we write it, it's not going to work. You will need real values in here. So I will be swapping these out with my actual values, I just won't show you what they are, before I run this script. Now let's create a provider so that we can make read-only calls to the blockchain. And to this, to new ethers providers.json RPC provider, I will pass our infra URL for the Garly testnet. And from that, and with the ethers wallet object, we'll create a signer so that we can interact with the blockchain and actually write transactions. To that, we need to pass our wallet secret and our provider. Now the only contract that we'll be initializing in our script is the swap router. And I'm going to name that router and we will write that right now. And this will take the router address as well as the swap router ABI. Now let's specify the amount we want to swap. Here I'm going to use parsed ether to convert an ether amount into a way amount, which is required by the code. So we will convert 0.01 ether to the way equivalent, and this function basically just adds 18 zeros to the amount that we pass in as an argument. Now we finally get to creating our main function.
we'll make this function async and we'll call it main and then let's not forget to actually call this function I often forget to do this and then I end up writing the script and nothing happens so let's write that now which we've done now the first thing we need to do is create a deadline for the transaction that we're going to run And this gets the time right now in milliseconds, divides it by a thousand so that it's in seconds. And then it adds 60 times 10, which is the equivalent of 10 minutes to that time, which sets the transaction to expire 10 minutes from now. And it will be canceled if it's not picked up and run within 10 minutes from now. Now we're going to be calling exact input single. That's the name of the function on the swap router contract. And that requires some arguments. We'll specify those now. We'll be putting them in this params object. So there are several values that this requires. A token in, and the token in in our case is the wrapped ether address. Even though we are passing in ether as the input, we will still need to specify wrapped ether as the input. And then the token out. And the token out in our case is the Uniswap token that we are swapping ether for. the fee, and this just specifies which of the swap pools that we're going to use to make this swap. I know that the 3000 pool exists on uh, Garly testnet, so we're going to use that. Then we'll need the recipient, which is us, which is our wallet, your wallet. So you'll put in your wallet address. And we already specified this at the top of our file, so let's grab that and paste it in here. We'll pass in the deadline. We will pass in the amount in. And we specified that a minute ago, so let's copy that, the input amount. And then there are two more values that we need to pass here. The amount out minimum. If at least this amount is not going to come out of the swap, then the swap will not be executed. I'm going to set this to zero because I'm not really trying to optimize anything here. I just want to show you how this works. And then there's also the square root price limit x96. I have some other videos uh, explaining this. I won't get into it now because it's a little bit complicated, but you don't really need to understand it to get the idea of swapping ether as the input. So we are done specifying the input arguments. Now let's encode these values along with the exact input single function. And this will be passed eventually to send transaction as the data attribute. So we'll call this data. Router is the swap router. And then we do dot interface dot encode function data. And then we specify the function that we want to encode, which in our case is the exact input single. Pass in the arguments in an array, and we only have one, which is params. And then with all of the above, we're going to create the arguments that we directly pass to send transaction. 
So I'll call these transaction args. And this needs a two. So we are sending this transaction to the swap router. So we want the address of the router. We need a from. That's our wallet. Our wallet address. We have data, which is the encoded version of all the functions and arguments that we want to actually run. We have value, and this is the amount of ether that we want to send along with this transaction. And this really gets to the whole trick of making this work of being able to send ether as the input rather than wrapped ether. And that is the value needs to be equal to the amount in. So for however much wrapped ether that we don't currently have, but we want to swap in for another token, we need to send that much ether along with the transaction. Then for the gas limit, I'm just going to specify a million way. And now we'll send the transaction. We'll just write a quick console.log so we know that this code is running. We will say signer.sendTransaction so that it gets signed by our wallet and then sent. And to that, we pass the transaction arguments. Then we'll wait for the transaction to complete. And we can do that with await transaction.wait. Make sure you have both the await here and the wait here, or this is not going to work. It won't actually wait. And then we'll have another console.log to say this is complete. Now let's give this a run on the console. Node swap ETH for token.js. It was sent. And before this transaction was completed, I had 0 0.1659 Uniswap tokens in my wallet, and I had zero wrapped ether. So let's see how that changes. So I now have 0 0.179 Uniswap tokens in my wallet. I still have zero wrapped ether. So the amount was obviously taken from my ETH on the Gearly test network. So it worked. Leave any questions you have in the comments and let me know what other tutorials you would like to see. I'll see you next time.